When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Uh, what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty. And if I've done my job correctly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. A bit like the start of The Wizard of Oz, but with, without the need to drop a house on a witch to steal her shoes. Pretty though they were. There's also no singing lions or scarecrows or tin men. In fact, it's nothing like The Wizard of Oz at all. Okay, uh, you will have seen <laughs> from the title of the thumbnail and if you've read any of it in the description that uh, this is a, a collab with my lovely friend Pink Poodle 2 and we are doing a palette bingo with ba -ba 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 Beauty Bay's Book of Magic. So, if you want to find out exactly which numbers fate drew for me this time, whether I managed to put them into some semblance of a look, or whether this in glorious Technicolor is a complete hot mess, it is time. Quoth Sammy the Sloth to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Right, I will have shown you this in the intro. Well, I probably would have shown you it. Not actually in the box. Uh, this is the book of magic from Beauty Bay. I wasn't going to buy it, and then I, it went down to a tenner, and I'm like, I'm getting it. And two days after I bought it for a tenner, it went down to nine quid. But cardboard packaging. And then a double bubble wrap bag situation going on. And for once, the actual palette is prettier than the outside packaging. Uh, but once again, it's got the ingredients on here, but not on here really frustrating which means I've either got to keep this whole box not happening or remember to cut the ingredients off and I'm probably going to forget to do that and all so so this is a 20 shade palette from a beauty bay it looks like that very very nice very very nice indeed huge great mirror really really good quality mirror actually and will actually fold back so i resisted swatching these until after i'd pulled the five numbers for palette bingo which, as I would have told you in the intro, I am doing with Pink Poodle. Pink Poodle 2, sorry. And I pulled uh, 5, which is this one here. 9, which is this one here. And then bizarrely, 16, 17, 18. So, not really shades that I would have put together. But that's what the palette bingo pulled, so that's what I've got to use, basically. 
I was really hoping it was going to pull some of these gorgeous teals. Maybe this really nice shimmery purple, but it didn't pull any of the colours I wanted it to pull. Never mind. Right, this remains a teaching channel, and as such, of course, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. This is also because of my chronic pain. Um, I also zoom right in close so that all you can see are my eyes on screen. The reason I do that is twofold. One, you don't get to see me grimacing in pain. And two, if your eyesight's not what it was and you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's happening. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit husky this morning. Uh, it does mean, of course, that when I look down to clean a brush, add more pigment, change brushes, you get a lovely shot of my beautiful little widow's peak hairline here. But that's a fair to play off to being able to see what's going on, really. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two, which will talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. People with deep set eyes are always told they have hooded lids. Always. Um, I can understand why <clears throat> the makeup wears very similarly when it comes to the eye shapes but they are different and to get the the best overall look and the most longevity you do need to apply them slightly differently depending on which eye shape you have so the clip that I'm going to insert which will be just my eyes on screen will talk you through how to work out which eye shape you have and which workaround you need to use to get the best out of your makeup. Once that is done, I will be back to pop some of these on here. So, each clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. 
So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. It is clean, it's just stained. As always hold the brush right at the end and if the handle is long enough brace it against your palm. Just gives you a bit more stability at this end. Now I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back. <clears throat> the reason I do this I'm 46 years old, the skin on my eyelids moves. I've also lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds, so uh, the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers that have always been slim, next door's girls are having fun, um, that have the same issue, so it can just be a genetic thing. And if you rely on the windscreen wiper, windscreen, I sound like a Sean Connery, if you rely on the windscreen wiper, you can get the problem where your lid folds over, the eyeshadow skips, and you get the telltale tiger stripes or barcoding. Let me have a sip, see if I can clear my huskiness. <clears throat> see if that helps. Right, so I'm going to go into Enchanted to start with, which is a very pale lavender it's kind of if you hold it against a pink it looks purple and if you hold it against a purple it looks pink it's one of those um, reasonable amount of kick up in the pan but that's not a problem because you can just pick that up next time round and uh, so she's disturbing it again. So I'm going to start sort of halfway between my natural crease and my brow. I'm just going to start building this up now. Obviously I did swatch these after I pulled the numbers. <clears throat> just so I could have a rough idea of what I was playing with in terms of colour. Now, I would rather, because obviously I tapped off quite a bit there, I would rather have a pigment that you need to build up 
than one that goes on too thick to start with because it's much easier to blend out and add more than it is to try and correct too much. But that's actually a really soft, pretty shade. I like that. This is the sort of thing that in the spring you could use as a one and done shade. You could blend it across your lid and just sort of fade it up. Then grab a slightly deeper one just for the corner there. And you you know, it's you could be done for work kind of thing. And then for going out in the evening just add a little bit of shimmer onto the lid and deepen up the crease. I'm going to do the same this side now. The reason that I do both eyes um, rather than just the one and then doing the other one afterwards um, there's a number of reasons but one of them is that with my fibro I can get um, quite puffy in my face my eyelids particularly can similar to with hay fever they can actually swell and puff up which means that, I mean, your eyes are not a symmetrical shape anyway. And if one of them's a bit puffier than the other, I like to sit back and relax my brows and just check that they look the same. Because there's some days that I have to do a vastly different shape on one eye just to get them to look the same when my brows are relaxed. And if I'd piled all the other colours on, I wouldn't necessarily be able to work out where the adjustment needed to go. That's a really, really lovely, light, soft shade to start with. Against my skin, you probably can't see it that well. Just cleaning the brush on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't use colour switches anymore, they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you're using a natural hair. I mean, this is synthetic, it's just a vulgar morphe. Right, <clears throat> I'm going to Sorcery next, which is the other purpley one that the bingo pulled for me. Again, a fair amount of kick up in that pan there. don't know if you can see that. I'm going to start this just a fraction lower but I'm going to repeat the same thing run it across the lid the reason I always start on the outside and then work my way back in towards the nose is because if you do deposit too much pigment it's much easier to deal with it over here when you haven't got a nose in the way I can struggle sometimes here and here. Um, I get quite dry patches on the outside edges of my eyes, almost like an eczema. Um, and that can sometimes affect how pigments blend just there and purples are difficult to create anyway, but this seems to be going on fine. Blending really nicely with that lighter shade. And nice soft diffused edges. Right. On camera it looks like there's a solid line just there. But in my mirror you can't actually see that. So one of the perils of filming in HD is that the camera picks up on stuff that your eyes don't. This is a really pretty colour. If all of the shades perform as well as these two have done, <clears throat> I can see this becoming one of my favourite palettes. I will admit I have been using that Mitchell palette a lot. 
the feet on the ground from his um, his company made by Mitchell. I'm wondering actually, given the layout of the palettes and the size of the pans etc and also the formulation, I'm wondering actually if he uses Beauty Bay to supply his um, products <clears throat> because in terms of how they swatch, how they feel on the lid and like I said size of pan, layout etc it um, it would never surprise me if he's either either using the same supplier that they do or because of course he did that palette with them didn't he the um, the double sided one with a mirror that came out <clears throat> I didn't get that because at the time it was too similar to the um, the Be Perfect and Stacey Marie palette that I'd recently just bought so I didn't feel the need to buy that one um, but I know it was very popular and I've only ever seen good reviews of it so I don't know whether he's sort of started his own company up and he's using the same suppliers that Beauty Bay use or if Beauty Bay is his manufacturer um, because as I said there in terms of the formulation they feel very similar well I could be completely wrong but it's just a thought. I really like this. And now I've got to start going in with blues. Great. <coughs> Hopefully, I can make this work. I think I should be able to. I'm going to grab a slightly smaller brush now. Um, go for this one. And I'm going to go into Cursed, which is that really deep blue. Again, same amount of kick up in the pan and I'm just going to pop this initially right on the edge of the crease if you've moved your crease now is, this is the shade that you use where you've moved your crease to and I'm just going to initially just concentrate this on the outer sort of third and bring it down a little bit onto the outer edge of the mobile lid flick the end up I mean blues and purples are difficult colours to create so The fact these are blending so nicely is actually a very, very good sign. But I'm just going to take whatever's left on the brush and just lightly drag it across. And then tiny, tiny, tiny little circles coming back up again. Small as I can do them. And then I'm going to grab 
a fluffy brush with nothing on it and just really smoke that out on that outer edge there so I've laid it on with precision with a smaller brush and now I'm just really smoking that and softening it up a little bit okay I like that I wasn't sure how these colours were going to look together but I'm quite happy with that and now do the same thing this side there's a bit more fallout with this shade, but that could be because obviously I'm using a, a different brush to start with. But I'll tidy that up in just a minute. So again, I'm just concentrating on the outer third. Flicking the edge up. Coming onto the outer edge the mobile lid and then just dragging whatever's left on the brush across and tiny little circles to come back up again and then we get out Big old fluffer. To really smoke that out. actually super pretty. I will admit I was a little worried about putting these colours together. Right, I've got a pad here just with some micellar water on. I'm going to use that just to tidy up that outer edge there and get rid of any fallout. The reason that I do this rather than using tape is because if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath it then it's going to pull your skin when you take it off and I've already got enough damage here can you see that tiger striping even with the circular movements that's because that's the eye that got pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was like five years old and it has completely buggered up that lid to the put to the effect that I actually when I'm putting um, anything on the mobile lid here I actually have to do the one thing I tell you not to which is that I have to stretch this lid out because otherwise the pigment just sits loosely in those creases and then ends up, as it dries, it gets into my eyes, it falls down my face. It's a hot mess. Right, I'm going with a lip or packer style brush. Sometimes these are called lip brushes, sometimes they're called concealer brushes, sometimes they're called mini packing brushes. It's just a small flat brush that will easily get into that corner. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, I say this all the time, but once I've loaded the brush with pigment I will be spraying it with this. Now I'm going to start loading Jinx on and start spraying this. Now the thing is, you can use any spray at all. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu, you can use 
priming spray, setting spray, fixing spray, finishing spray. You can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each time you do your makeup. What you wet it with isn't important. Making sure you don't go into it with a wet brush is important. Right, so you can see I've loaded the brush up. I'm just going to give that a spritz. Which now means, of course, the ferrule, this bit here, is wet. So I'm going to stick it in my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down and loosening the glue there. Because if all the bristles fall out, we don't have a brush anymore. We have a stick. Right, I always wet shimmers, regardless of um, brand, because it helps minimise fallout. <clears throat> And the first time I use them, I don't do a cut crease and I don't use glitter glue because I want to see how much opacity the shimmer has and how much holding power it has without the need for glitter glues. Right. I'm going to pop this all the way across the mobile lid. Well, the two thirds of it hasn't got any pigment on yet. To make this quite a dark look. That's a really pretty. I thought at first it was just grey, but it's not. It's. It's a duochrome, it's, it's got a grey base to it, but it's got like a, a turquoise flip, turquoise green flip. I hope you can see that. I'm just going to use the tip of these bristles just to buff the edge where it meets that matte shade, just to, to soften it up a little bit. Right, just going to dry the brush off and load up again to do the other eye. These of well, this one anyway, this is the first one of the shimmers I've used a brush with. It's super super soft. It's it feels like a super shock shadow if ever if you've used any one of those. Um, Right, now, where I have to stretch this lid out, I only stretch it far enough to flatten the creasing, I don't pull it out to my ear, I apply the pigment as quick as possible and then gently release the lid back again, so that I cause as little additional damage to the lid as possible. And I very often have to reload the brush because obviously by stretching the lid like that I've used up a lot more of the pigment than I would do. But this one seems to be opaque enough that I don't need to. That's a good sign. And again, tip of the bristles just to blend. I really like that. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on. And once I'm done, I'll be back to finish off this eye look. And no, I haven't forgotten, there's still one shade I haven't used yet. I'm just going to tidy up the under eye area because I do get a little bit of fallout from it. But then you usually do with a shimmer. Right. 
got a little while now before I can speak to you again, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Okay, I am back. I went a little bit mad with the blush today, with the old blush draping. But, uh, hmm, just got carried away. Right, flat top brush. This is my friend Will's favourite bit. And I'm going to dip back into Cursed, which is the blue. Just tap off briefly on a piece of towel there. And I'm going to run this along the lower lash line. I have now found I've got super sensitive eyes um, to the point that for many years I couldn't wear liner on my waterline at all. I have since found some that will work with my waterline, but only on days when my eyes are feeling really, you know, okay. And they're a little bit watery today, so I'm not going to risk it. So we have one of those, um, to make life easier for me, Hubby got me one of the ring doorbells so that I can talk to whoever's at the door and if it is a package I can say to them, yeah I'm on my way, you know, give me a couple of minutes to get there sort of thing. Because that was always the problem, I'd, I'd struggle to get up off the sofa and all too often by the time I'd got there, you know what these courier drivers are like, they've disappeared off somewhere and you're just like, what the... And the other thing I've noticed is that our Amazon driver, even if the package fits through the door, he'll knock. It's not necessary. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it, it's flat topped and chunky. A bit like me. Um, but you can use any dense smudge or brush basically. I'm going to go back into Enchanted which was that first lightest shade that we used. I'm just going to use that just to soften this blue on the lower lash line. Again, against my skin tone, you can barely see it. To the point I might add a little bit of sorcery. Which is the colour that I used up there and in my brows. Got a touch of that, just on the outer edge here. There we go. I know what you're thinking. You've still only used four of the five shades that you pulled. Yes, absolutely right. But now I'm going to use the fifth one. Right, this is an old lip brush that I bought for me by God, well over ten years ago now. So I'm going to go into Moonlight. I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of my brow. How beautiful is that? Ooh, I might have to use this as my highlight today. And obviously I'm going to pop this into my inner corner. And bring it along and just blend it in with the under eye there. This is totally not a look that I would have thrown together myself. It's not colours that I would have 
necessarily have picked together. But the makeup, God, was smiling on me because I really like this look. Alrighty, my lovelies. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to use this fluffy brush to apply some of that gorgeous colour to my cheekbones, my nose, my top lip, and my seeking Alexandria, we call it Chalupa Chin. Um, pop some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, which I washed last night and now I can't do a damn thing with it. And I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go away now. I am back. Okay, I used my little mini Clinique High Impact Mascara that my friend Hedda sent me. I did pop that on my cheeks, but when I look straight forward, I can see a slight cast with it here. So um, I might have to put a like a white highlight underneath it and then use that just on the very very high points. Lipstick is Mac Craving, which I haven't worn for ages. Uh, so I just thought I'd give her a bit of a run out today. So, this is my palette bingo look with the Book of Magic in collaboration with my lovely friend Jean, Pink Poodle 2. Um, I didn't talk much about her while I was doing the makeup look because I wanted to concentrate on the makeup. But now I can tell you a little bit about her. She is... She's one of the people that I've met through YouTube that I am really proud to be able to call my friend. She is such a kind, caring woman. Um, she has the most amazing pink hair, I am so jealous. Uh, two gorgeous poodles. Uh, and she also has the West End and the East End poodle behind her. Um, she does makeup, she does unboxings, she also does unboxings of things that are not just makeup, she does a lot of occult boxes and things like that. So it's it's a real eclectic mix over on her channel. Um, and like I said, she's such a lovely woman, she really, really is. And if you haven't already seen her channel, you're missing out quite frankly. Um, I will have her linked in the description box, both her channel and her film, so it's nice and easy for you to look her up, watch her film, subscribe maybe. Um, she really is a lovely, lovely woman and someone that um, I'm proud to call my friend. Hmm. So. What do you think of this look? Did I do well with the colours that I was given? And are there any specific colours in here? Going again like 1 to 5, 6 to 10 etc. Are there any colours in here you would like to see me use on camera? Um, obviously I'm going to be playing with this palette now now that I've used it for this bingo, which is what I was waiting for. Um, but if there's any specific colours in here you would like to see me use, then make a note of them in the comments box for me, and I'll do my absolute best to get that done for you and get that included. So, uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you all at a rate of knots um, but rather cheekily they're leaving my films in your suggested feed so it's not obvious that you've been deleted um, so please double check that while you're doing that it's also worth double checking your notification status because um, they seem to have stopped sending emails at the moment and when they made that change all of my notifications got knocked back from all to personalised. 
which means if they do decide to change their mind and send emails out again, if it's personalised, I'm still not going to get any emails. So I had to go through every single channel that I've got notifications set for and change them. So not just for me, but for all the other channels that you follow, it's definitely worth double checking that. Um, as I said, please go across and check out Jean's film, which is linked down below. Let her know you've come from 4F and uh, just show her the same amount of love that you always show me. Because let's face it, 4F Beauty family is the nicest group of people on the internet. So let's spread that love across to Pink Poodle 2. If you're here from Pink Poodle 2 or you've tripped over me some other way, hi. Hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is pretty typical of what you're going to get from me. You get me wittering away about everything and nothing very much at all. In what I'm told is a soothing voice. So if this sounds like your kind of thing, then you know it'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do you hit that red subscribe button then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that youtube are going to start sending them again soon so that was my front door there is motion at your front door oh it looks like it's just a bus going by that's all right Now, once you've uh, joined the 4F family, or if you're still contemplating joining, I've got an awful lot of other films that you can watch to see whether you want to join, whether you like the kind of videos that I'm putting out. I've got collabs like this, palette bingos, challenges, product reviews, makeup tutorials, um, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So basically, as I've said for what feels like forever now, if you want to have a little bit of chill out me time, then grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and indulge. What better way to chill out than listening to me waffle on whilst applying coloured pigments to various areas of my face? <coughs> right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fast. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.